On January 13, 1842, the lone survivor of a British army in Afghanistan staggered into Jalalabad. Digging deeper, we find Dr. William Bryden, along with the British Army consisting of 4,500 soldiers and about 12,000 tag-along civilians, family, and camp followers, leaving Kabul under pressure for the safety of another British stronghold in Jalalabad on January 6, 1842. One week later, only Dr. Bryden was spotted by lookouts at Jalalabad, and he did not look so good. A portion of his skull had been lopped off, and he had a tale of hell to tell, of sniping and harassment by Afghan tribesmen until a final battle earlier on the 13th. The most wacky part of his story was that he only lost a bit of his skull because he had a magazine crammed into his hat for warmth. It appeared that Dr. Bryden was the only survivor out of 16,500 people that had begun the trek. This distinction earned Dr. Bryden much fame and notoriety, but it turned out that he was not the sole survivor. The facts later revealed that about 115 soldiers and civilians had survived and been captured, later to be turned over to the British alive, but of course Bryden was the only one to complete the journey on his own. Barely. Afghanistan is not a large country, only about the size of Texas, and is not densely populated, but both the terrain and people can be quite ferocious. Mountainous and rocky, Afghanistan has foiled many invaders over the years, from the British in the 19th century to the Russians or Soviets in the 20th century and to the Americans in the 21st century. Situated on the route from India and Pakistan to the West, Afghanistan has been lusted after but never tamed. The Soviet Army's defeat after 10 years of failure was a major factor in the breakup of the Soviet Union. The United States has fared little better after over a decade of trying. British frustration was depicted in the movie The Man Who Would Be King, 1975 with Sean Connery and Michael Caine, based on a tale by Rudyard Kipling. The lesson taught by the story is that it is unwise to try to subdue any part of Afghanistan, something history just does not seem to get across to superpowers. As a question for my students, should the United States of America maintain its military presence in Afghanistan? If so, for how much longer? If not, why not? If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines. Your viewership is much appreciated.